continuing with the discussion of the topic of the last uh, episode, we will today look at some tips on how to be a better entrepreneur or how to guide your startup better. So <clears throat> basically, it's there's no rocket science here. It needs a lot of discipline. It needs certain habits, and which we've discussed on other on other episodes. So it's not uh, it's that it's going to come as a shock to you. So let's just delve into it and look at what can be done to ensure that the possibility of success is the greatest, where the probability of success is the highest, then what can you do to ensure this? So one of the first things is time. Unfortunately, we have only 24 hours a day and there's no more time. So you need to master your minutes. I would have loved to talk about seconds, but we all know that's going to be a little impractical. So you need to master your minutes and just make sure that you plan your entire day with utmost precision. Once you've done that, focus and make sure that you do things in the allocated time frame. You could make mistakes. Sometimes you will overshoot, but try to cover up the same day. Don't leave it for the next day as far as possible. So master your minutes and make sure that from the beginning, the day you decide that you want to be an entrepreneur, set yourself up for success. That's what you're after. So just set yourself up for it. And it's very simple. One of the first things that you need to set up when you're doing an entrepreneurial project is to go to meetings well prepared. Because life has taught us, at least it has taught me, that a missed opportunity does not come back again. And very often, if you screw up, pardon my French, if you, if you lose out on a meeting, for whatever be the reason, that meeting does not come again. And getting back for that person to open the door for you is a substantial challenge. So go to meetings well prepared. Know the agenda well in advance. Have it in your mind. Know. And when you are preparing for this thing, make sure that for each agenda point, you put the number of minutes as required, depending on the total time that you have for the meeting. For every topic on the agenda, make sure that you sit down and think about the possible questions that can be raised. And prepare answers for them Prepare the pointers about how you will answer to them from before. Yes, you will have to need uh, tweak this standing on your foot during the meeting, but go as much prepared as possible. And set clear objectives of why you're going for that meeting. <clears throat> Another important thing which we tend to do is procrastinate. When you're doing a startup, especially in the initial stages, you require to be prompt. Prompt, especially in replying to queries, inquiries, or anything that comes your way. Do not, under any circumstances, procrastinate. Once you start, and if you have people who are supporting you, they may be employees, they may be friends, delegate and empower them. We've talked about this for other things about leadership, but it is important to do it. You are a leader at the end of the day. Starting an entrepreneur uh, project is nothing short of being a great leader. Okay, So learn to delegate and empower the people working with you. And when you delegate, make sure that you give them ample clarity on what is required as the end result and the process Sometimes the process is as important as the end result. So make sure that you give them enough clarity on the process and the end result. 
And naturally, if they are to do the task, you need to make sure that you provide them with enough authority and autonomy to make sure that they can perform the task. And by doing this, you will automatically create a culture of responsibility and growth within your organizations, which is very vital for any startup. Fuel your mind and your body. Remember, a healthy mind can only exist if your body is healthy. So stay healthy. Take care of yourself in spite of, as I said in the last episode, putting in 90 to 100 hours a day. You will have to figure out how. Maybe you walk from work to home or you do something, you cycle, but make sure that you stay healthy, stay fit, eat mindfully. I'm the last person to propose. <laughs> eat mindfully so that you stay healthy because you need a healthy body to have a healthy mind. Okay? Embrace simplicity and functionality in your entire organization. Do not be extravagant. Even that small pin with which you attach your paper costs. And although it might seem very petty to talk about that, this petty cost build up. So don't be extravagant. Reduce distractions. Try to design your workspace in such a way that you don't get distracted very easily. And organize your entire workspace so that it enables you to concentrate. Once you remove distractions, that's going to be partially uh, automatic, but do show. And pen everything down. Do what you say, say what you do, do what you write, write what you do. And as we say, a short pen is far better than a long memory. Okay, so pen down everything. The advantage of this is it clears your mind. It aids your memory. Both very important. And also, because it is written down somewhere, and you can use it in various ways, it is a constant reminder. And it helps you to stick to your commitments. It helps you to focus on your commitments. Okay. Something that we tend to do, really neglect is sleep. You need to prioritize your sleep. Avoid non-essential social activities. But that doesn't mean you become a loner and stick only to your office. There will be times when you will need to get out and get recharged. Do it. But not at the cost of your sleep. I would go to the extent of saying that do it partially at the cost of your work hour. You can cover up for it somewhere. Maybe you can delegate some more. Maybe you can work a little extra on the next five days. But when you need to recharge, make sure that you go out, spend time with friends, family, and get recharged. Always be a learner. The world evolves at a rapid pace. And if you don't keep up with that pace when you are personally evolving, you are going to be left behind. Because in today's fast-paced world, if you are standing somewhere, actually it is worse or just as bad as taking a step back. So you need to evolve constantly. Okay? And it, let's, let's understand something. You might have heard a lot of entrepreneurship from your friends and relatives and fathers and uncles and whoever else. But they were in a different age. You are in a different age. And this evolution that I'm talking of, staying in tune with the times, is to be based on today. Today it is so much easier to build a product, which was not so before. Today it is so much easier to market a product, to find customers. It's not that you have to spend tons of money of putting advertisements in papers or on TV or anything. Social media lets you do all of that. And in an inexpensive way, it's not going to burn holes in your pocket, so to say. And in today's times, you don't have to wait for the perfect product. What you need to do is to launch a MVP, which most of us refer to as minimal viable product. But I say a minimum 
valuable product. Your product has to have value, launch it. Then keep iterating on it, keep improving, keep in sync with your customers, listen to what they have to say, incorporate it if it justifies, if it is justified, and keep improving your product all the time. Okay. Plan for short-term wins because these multiple short-term wins are the ones that will get you long-term success. So set milestones, set short-term milestones which give you a win and accumulate those wins, keep progressing to get long-term success. And as I just said, stay close to and in sync with your customer. You don't know how important that is and you will realize it once you start doing it because the kind of feedback you get from your customers, people who are actually going to or using your product is going to make your product way better than anything you can think of. And always focus on your strengths. Improve your, your weaknesses, but focus on your strengths. Make the best use of them. Always focus on learning. When I say sync with your customers, or when I say iterate your product, launch a minimum valuable product, and then keep iterating on it, it means that you keep learning. Keep learning all the time and keep launching revised editions. Even a company like Apple comes up with upgrades within a week or 10 days at times to their new iOS or whatever it is. That's the way the world works today. So make sure that you focus on learning and improving your product. And don't look for perfection. If you are going to look for perfection, trust me, your product is never ever going to get launched. Okay? And in today's times, build for scale from the beginning. Build your systems so that you can scale your project, scale your product, scale your service as and when required. Even if it is as simple as how much bandwidth to use. Go for an agency that will let you expand your bandwidth as and when necessary. And most importantly, this is something we tend to ignore. Just because that next door startup is a success doesn't mean the culture he has built in his organization will work for you. Each organization, each service, each product requires a culture of its own. And therefore, you should build a culture that suits your project and your Now, as I said last time, we're going to talk of whether you should have a co-founder or not. I believe it's a big help. And in my business, Alcraftist, I do have a co-founder. So building a business is a very lonely job, okay? You're alone. You may have people who are helping you. You may have employees. But at the end of the day, you are still alone. And it's a lot of hard work. So having a co-founder really helps. How? It increases your commitment level. Because now you are also accountable to somebody else and not just to yourself. It's like announcing to the world. Here you're announcing to one person what you want, what is your mission, what is your vision, what is your goal. So it helps you to stay accountable. And it helps you to keep your mind at peace. There are disappointments. There are setbacks that will always come when you're starting something new. Okay, and these disappointments and setbacks often will lead to self-doubt whether you're doing the right thing or whether you're sitting in the right project or whether it's worth going into it at all. Having a co-founder is going to help you to overcome these challenging times. So having said that, what kind of partner should you find? The first and most important thing is that the partner should have the same passion, the same vision, and the same goals that you have. They cannot be divergent. You both have to be on the same page. And the partner should be someone who can act as your sounding board when you are thinking. It should somebody who offers you encouragement when you are down and out, which is going to be there, and who is your cheerleader when those small wins are achieved. So he is somebody 
who is going to be at your back with you all the time. And that person should be able to, and you have to give him the right to do it, to goad you and push yourself to do more. Constantly and always. So, when we say that a founder, co-founder is or a partner is so important, you need to be sure that you are giving due thought you're putting your mind completely to it when you're looking for a partner. Because you must find a partner where you are one, he is one, but one plus one should be a minimum of three, ideally at least a 11, and definitely not just a two, and 100% not anything lower than a two. So you need to make sure that this is there with the partner you choose. Always better to have somebody whom you know because then you know whether any of his traits or habits you are uncomfortable with and which may in the long run lead you to having more stress than reduced stress. And if you have worked with that person on a project earlier, there's nothing like it because then you've seen them operating in the working conditions. Check, analyze what that person is bringing to the table. His skills should complement yours. A supplement may not be necessary, but a complement is whatever you are lacking if he has. Nothing like it. Go ahead and find such a partner. Get, them, get to know them in depth. And that's why you pick on somebody you already know. It's easier to then know them in depth. And take it at a quick time. There is no rush. Don't rush into finding a partner. Take adequate time. Do you proper due diligence and find the right partner. If you've done this and if you find a partner based on this, trust me, your journey to be successful in your startup or entrepreneurial business, whatever it is that you are starting, is more likely to happen than otherwise. Now with these two sessions, you know whether you you want to be an entrepreneur or not, do message me with a thumbs up if you think that entrepreneurship is something you would like to get into. I'd love to have your feedback and reactions. Bye-bye. Have a great evening and see you the next day after tomorrow with the same topic but on a different subject. Okay, thank you.